Hey, this is Anton over at TheHyperAdvisor.com. I wanted to get into a video here where I um, talk about live migration in Hyper-V Server um, uh, 2012. Um, first off, we have to go into the actual host to uh, enable the live migration. It is not enabled by default. And then we also um, so select a, an authentication protocol here, um, on, depending on what we want to gain. If we're in a have a domain set up uh, using the Kerberos is going to be the most secure and preferred way to do it. You can also set up uh, how many simultaneous live migrations that we choose. Uh, this here is pretty much unlimited but uh, is um, depends on your your hardware setup or your, your configuration of your networking. So you can change this, just be aware that the data travels across the, um, the network and if you don't have enough bandwidth that could bring, bring the, the Hyper-V host to the knees. Um, then the incoming live migrations where you can choose a particular IP address that you configure in your networking setup that you use uh, solely for the uh, live migration. So once this piece is, is done and set up, we'll go ahead and try to do a live migration. So I've done that, I've done that setup on both nodes, as we can see here, we have it enabled and using Kerberos. And out of the box, I have these two nodes. Uh, there, there is nothing shared between them except the network. Uh, and the virtual machines on the A on this A system are all stored locally on the C in a C drive location and the same for the B there is a setup to to put all the virtual machines in a location here on the local hard disk. Now if we go ahead and do a live migration so I'm in Hyper-V and I am actually not on the the A node so I am logged into this this N01B system this one here and the virtual machine is on the A system here. And I'm just doing this because I want to show that this will actually not work. Um, there's an extra step that needs to be done. So we'll go ahead and type in the system. And I want to move it to the O1B. I'm going to move everything to a single location here. And I'll go ahead and select the path uh, that I want this to end up on this directory. We'll click finish and here we go. This is the error that I want to show you that it's going to fail for the uh, migration because of uh, the credentials here. Now basically what we need to do is set up um, constraint delegation with an AD and to do that I'm going to need to log into um, Active Directory or a system that has the tools. Well, I can open up the, the users and computer tools in order to do this. So let me switch over and open up that tool. And NAD here, I'm on the computers and these are the two hosts that I want to configure. So we'll go ahead and into the properties and we'll click on the delegation tab. Just note if you do not see this delegation tab, it could be because your domain or fourth functional levels are not high enough so you may need to raise that if, if you don't see the delegation uh, tab. So by default it does have do not trust this computer for delegation. What we want to do is go ahead and change it for delegation but for uh, specified services only and we want to use Kerberos only as well. So we're going to go ahead and click add users and computers and we are at the properties right now of the A system. So what, what we want to set in here is the, the B system, the destination. Um, and here we'll select the B system and the only ser services we need out of here is the SIFs uh, so that we can move the, the, uh, the, the files for the virtual machine and then the virtual Microsoft virtual system uh, migration here 
and you select both of those. We'll click OK. Both should show up in the list here, and we'll click OK. Now we just go to the other the other host and do the same. Okay, so I, I have these systems in here, and we'll click OK. If I go back to the host, and what we want to do is run the same the, the same move or live migration here. Taking the defaults, we'll put in the host again. Want all the, the files to go into a single location. We'll choose that location now on the D host. Click next and then finish. Uh, so you see, we get the error once more. Um, I've noticed this does take a while. To take effect if we go into the one, one trick that I've, I've found that worked well is if you log into the actual source to where the virtual machine is and we start the migration from there uh, any subsequent migrations will actually work as they should so let's go ahead and move this virtual machine from the source over to the B node this will take take a little bit of time to to copy because there's nothing shared amongst these two hosts so we'll have to copy all of the the virtual files this files for that virtual machine so we can see it's going it's performing the the move and we'll speed ahead so uh, to the point where this is finished okay looking at the a node here or this this N01A host, we can see that the the VM that I, I did the live migration on has moved. And if we look at the B node, we'll see that it's here. And since we are on the A node, um, what we can do is do the reverse of the test we we're trying to do, where we're trying to move from um, being logged into the B and moving it from the A. But now we're logged into A and what we'll do is go ahead and try to move it from the B uh, just to show that this does work. Um, we'll go ahead and move and we're just going to do the same thing we did before but the opposite uh, using the, the opposing host I should say. So this time we do not get the error message and it is performing the move. Um, so the so by setting up the constraint delegation, we have given these two systems access to be able to move virtual machines and their files back and forth between each other. Uh, you do not have to, once you do the configuration for the delegation, you do not have to log into the actual machine that is hosting the virtual machine in order to move it. This still will not allow you to be able to move the virtual machine if, say, you're logged into your desktop and you have the Hyper-V um, manager open and you've connected to the virtual machine, but you can see everything that's on them. You would not have access to do the move from those systems because we, we've only added the, the A and the B systems to be able to, um, for the delegation. It's not that ideal in a, in a large environment, say, where you will have uh, five, ten more systems uh, or host systems. Uh, just because you would have to log into one or the other, I guess it's not too bad, but usually um, we're used to in the, just say, from the VMware side of things, if we have VMware, we just have a local client install, connect remotely to the vCenter server and we'd be able to copy and uh, migrate uh, vMotion things from one host to another. In order to do that, Hyper-V Manager is not really the tool, but uh, that's where the System Center Virtual Machine Manager will come into play. I will not get into that in this video, but um, if you like the video, go ahead and leave comments. And don't forget to check out my blog over at thehyperadvisor.com. All right, and with that said, uh, that's everything.
Have a good one.